you'll notice that there's always an action to the brush. And from the action of the brush, the paint, the paint results in a certain appearance. That's called rhythm of application. Really, any stroke will not do. The stroke has to be inspired by your observation. Not only your observation, but your analyzation of what you see. So we don't look and paint, we look, analyze, and paint. Very important to have your rag close by to wipe the brush down when you feel as though it is too heavily saturated to affect a blend. I'm going to pull that apple in further than I think I need it to be able to now do the little copper pot. <clears throat> and starting from the top down, I'm going to do it a slice at a time. Two brushes, two nice brushes, and I'm going to mix up a general tone. And because metals have a magnificent highlight, I'm going to sculpt that object shape by its basic tone and its highlight. The tone that I see at the very top is the basic tone. The next slice is being affected by the highlight. This next slice is Primarily the basic tone. And the highlight is here. Where do the highlights hit? Wherever the plane is directly in line with the light. This happens on any concave or convex plane in line with the light. Not in line with your point of view, in line with the light. It is appreciating the object shape in slices that will make you be able to draw better. I keep stressing that because people are always worried about the drawing. This makes it sensible. And sensible seems to mean, in painting, mean right. You don't want it to make it look realistic. You want to make it look plausible, recognizable in terms of paint. After all, I don't have a little copper pot on my brush. All I have are the tones and colors that I see on the copper pot. This slice comes down. An educated finger is always a handy thing to have. And now we have this dramatic highlight that hits on the concave plane and on the convex plane in line with the light. This is happening on this sloped form. Don't be afraid to have these colors mushed together. Years ago when I studied as a child, my first art teacher said, Painting is organizing successful accidents in rapid succession. Now I'm going to cut that shape off with the next plane down.
And here I have another little highlight because it bumps out again. Put it in bigger than it is so I can ease it in. And now we're down to this plane, the down plane. And thus the object seems to grow under your brush strokes. I can't really stop now. I see another slice, and that is its rolled base. Now the copper pot is done only in highlight and body tone. There are areas that are so much away from the source of light that they are actually in shadow. Of course, they're all going to be on the left. I mean, I'm sorry, on the right. Opposite from the source of light. Constantly be aware you're painting what the light does to the object, not what the object really is. That's a capricious dark. Odd that it's there. Shouldn't be on the light side, although reflective objects often get very dark things on the side toward the light. If you see something about the subject that you think is intriguing, put it in. Don't be too mechanical. There are reflections on that copper pot too that will be a great benefit. And I like to save reflections for later. Why don't I continue right along now because and do the red apple. When an apple, when you see a color that looks as though it um, <clears throat> doesn't have white in it, then you can go reach the color first. As soon as you think that it, and you can always feel that it has white. So I'm going to take this red and put, take it down on a thing on my palette. Judge it, because I can look at it and look at this. I think I could even put a little alizarin in this to get this a richer red to start that. Yeah, like it. Use it. That's where the light strikes. Yes, the light can strike in the anatomy of its stem end. I'm going to put that in and now I'm going to First, with a darker red, begin the shadow. And then with the complement in that darker red, paint the shadow. This procedure and use of color is an analysis of the principles of nature. I didn't invent them. I just am aware of the nature of nature and use nature's characteristic in my painting to get that natural look. <laughs> 